Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. I like it. I like this. I like the feedback. I like all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm Brian. Uh, yes, do not adjust your uh, televisions. I am actually this size. Um, you may or may not be able to tell from there, but I'm going to answer the question that those of you in the front are curious about. I'm six foot eight. Um, so Kevin Durant says he's one inch taller than me, and that's a lie. He's taller than that, and let's not even pretend like he's not. He's a giant of a man. Um, I'm here with my son this morning. Uh, some of you guys. <laughs> I think I embarrassed him a little bit. That's the, yes, that's my goal in life. Um, so today we're talking about Thousand Strong, and uh, we're going to be having some, some footage rolling there. How many of you have heard of h and Night Market? How many of you? There you go. How many of you have got to go? to h and H before, so quite a few of you. For those of you that haven't got to go before, maybe you haven't heard of it, you've li been living under a rock out in Durant, Oklahoma, I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, I made that joke. Um, so what it is is h and is Food Trucks Live Music. That's what it is. It's, you know, a few years ago, about five years ago, what, we, what happened was a conversation started between a lady that loves coffee and a guy that loves beer and a, and a chef that loves food, and they started talking about how do we introduce downtown, midtown, how do we introduce people to this area of the city? So he said, let's get some food trucks and maybe we'll have some live music and people will come down and hang out because let's be honest, really the, the, whole, the whole point of it wasn't the food trucks or live music. The whole point of it was people need to hang out. People want to hang out. We want to have a reason to hang out. We want to have a reason to spend time together because at the end of the day, that's what we really want because I'm going to be honest with you, if all it was was food trucks and live music, then all of you would be standing in line in a food truck at the corner of Northwest Expressway and Rockwell right now to eat some food, and you're not. Food trucks are great. Live music, I love it. I played music for 15 years and, and have lived on vans and buses and, and in the back seat of weird cars that smell very odd and all those kinds of things that come along with being on the road. All those things are really great. All those things, I really love them, but the reality is what we want is to be together with people. What we want is to share experiences because, because at this point in our lives, at this point in history, and not just us as a generation, but gener like nationally and culturally overall, what we want is experiences. I had a, I had a bit of a, uh, there are pictures that are running up there on the screen right now. I kind of wanted to, to, to run through them a little bit so that you could kind of see to get a context for what, it, what 40 to 50,000 people in the street in downtown Oklahoma City really looks like. Because you guys think of 40 to 50,000 people and you probably think of you know, Memorial Stadium on a Saturday and all the kinds of things that go with that. But, but this is a whole different animal. This is a whole different ball game. This is a whole different kind of thing because, because when we talk about H&H, the, the most valuable thing about it is that whenever you walk through, and I, we have this conversation a lot, you're gonna see 50 people you didn't expect to see. And that's why. You're going to see 50 people you didn't expect to see. At one point, I was standing at the very epicenter at the corner of 8th and Hudson in downtown Oklahoma City. I'm standing in front of the coffee shop that's right there. And I decided that I was going to walk down the street all the way down to 10th and Hudson. And as I was walking, I kept hearing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And I, when I say over and over again, I mean 15 to 20 times in those three blocks. I heard some variation of this conversation going on. Oh, I had no idea that I was going to see you here tonight. Oh, we haven't seen each other in so long. Oh, it's so great to talk to you. It's so great to catch up with you. And those kind of conversations were happening all over the place. And, and something really beautiful swelled up inside of me because that's why. We didn't start it to be big. We didn't start it to be cool. We didn't start it to get famous. We didn't start it to do anything because none of us looked at it as our big opportunity. None of us thought this is our big chance to make a splash. This is the moment that we walk into the room and Simon Cowell tells us we can sing. Like this was, nothing about it was that. Everything about it was, how do we spend time together? And we knew that from the very outset that that's the most valuable and most beautiful thing that, that happens in cities. That's the thing that, that it's the difference between a, a city with vibrancy and a ghost town. From 1,000 miles away and from 10,000 feet, a city can look alive, but, but only when we put our feet on the sidewalks and we walk through the streets and we see our friends, we see our community, we see our neighbors, we see all those kinds of things, do we realize whether or not we're really connected to anything else. 
I have a good friend who's a songwriter who's done very well in his life. And I asked him, I said, how do you know what songs to work on? Because what he does is he writes a song each and every day. That's his habit. That's his rhythm. That's what he does. He writes a song each and every day, and he has these, he has these notebooks that are filled with lyrics and filled with notes and filled with songs and, and filled with little tags so that he can find them on his little phone. And, and, and I said, how do you know which ones to work on? He said, what I do is I, I fill up an entire book with lyrics and songs and ideas. And then I fill up the next book with lyrics and songs and ideas, and I look back two books. And I read through these lyrics, and I read through these songs, and whenever he writes them, he doesn't write them for somebody. He writes them because that's what he feels that day. That's the great thing about writing every day. He writes what he feels that day and in that moment and in that place. He doesn't write it going, hey, I bet this will be on the radio. He writes what he loves. But then what happens is a couple months later when he goes back and he reads through all those lyrics, reads through all those notes, reads, looks at all those things, the question he asks is this. Is this something I feel or is this something we feel? I want you to think about that for just a second. I'm going to leave a bit of awkward silence in the middle so that you can soak that up for a second. Is this something that I feel or something that we feel collectively? Because he made a statement to me in that conversation that night. He said, the songs that are timeless are the songs that we all feel. I want you to think back over the years and the songs that you've fallen in love with. There's something in them that they say that says something that's true. And it might be something really profound. It might be something really silly. But it's something that we hear and we feel and we know. And all of a sudden we feel kinship with, with everything else that's out there. And we go, somebody else felt the same thing that I felt. Holy smokes, that's what we want. Once H and H started to kind of catch on some, catch some momentum, one of the things that I would do is I'd go to other events and I'd go to other places and I would, I would just kind of watch and I'd take notes and I'd kind of ask questions because by nature I'm an analyst. I'm the guy that I look at it and I poke and I prod and I ask questions and I do, I do brand strategy for a living, which in essence what that means is I'm the guy that tells people when they have an ugly baby. And, it's, and you're like... What? Really? Like, I think my Uncle Steve does that, but he doesn't get paid for it. Um, so what I do is I'm the guy that looks at things and I go, that, have we thought about this? Have we thought about that? So I got to go to this event, and uh, whenever I was there, I was helping out with production, but really the whole, the whole reason I was there is because I wanted to see it. And I saw these women. They were probably 55 years old, and the event started at 7 o'clock at night, and at 5.30 the streets were already closed. And at 5.30, these women showed up with their, with their lawn chairs. And they set their lawn chairs up about 30 yards away from the stage, right in the middle of the street in this little semicircle. And they wheeled out their coolers, and they wheeled out all their stuff. And they like, it's like they were building a compound right there in the middle of the street. And here's these somewhere around the age of 55, 60-year-old women. And I'm watching them, and I'm going, OK, I want to watch them for a little while in a not creepy way and figure out asked the question of, why are they here? And they were sitting down, and I saw them talking, and they walked over to this taco truck, and they got some food, and they sat and talked, and, and then they went from the taco truck over to this little, this little place where you could buy, you know, small things, and, you know, so they bought a couple things, had some tacos, and they went over to the beer vendor, and the 60-year-old lady's walking around with a cup of beer in their hand that made me giggle for, like, a seventh grader. It was ridiculous. So here are these ladies walking around with their red Solo cups, and, uh, and, and I'm watching everything that they're doing, and as I'm watching them do all these things, and they're kind of checking off the list of things that you're supposed to do at these events, I was watching them going, they're not here for the tacos, they're not here for the beer, they're not here for the shopping, they're not here for the music, because here's you know, this band full of guys in skinny jeans up there wailing on their guitars, and the 60-year-old ladies are like, oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> and I'm watching all of it, and the whole time trying not to be that creepy guy that's like, how you doing? Um, so as I'm watching, some of you are a little creeped out right now. Um, so as I'm watching and I'm like, why are they really here? And, and, it, and you guys already know where I'm going with this. You guys have already figured out the obvious, the obvious answer to the question. And the answer to the question is, they're there to be together. All they wanted was a reason to be together. They wanted a reason to be somewhere else besides their living room, 
They wanted a reason to be with each other, to laugh with each other, to share experiences, because at the end of the day, the most important thing that we get are our experiences. We're at a time in history where experiences are more important than anything else. I'd be willing to bet that you guys have not spent more than $100 buying and downloading music this year. You've probably not spent more than $100, but probably most of you have Spotify, Apple Music, like one of these, you have one of these accounts where you can listen to music all the time and really it costs next to nothing. Because we're a generation that we don't really buy music anymore, but we'll pay $200 to see a concert. Have you ever thought about that? We'll pay $200 to experience, and we'll spend $45 on a t-shirt that costs $3 to make, and we all know that it costs $3 to make it, but it doesn't matter. We want a memento of that night so we can remember what we experienced and what we consumed and, and what, we, what that moment meant to us. And from now on, we're going to look at that t-shirt and we're going to remember who we went to that show with because we want experiences more than anything else. This year for Christmas, I bought my, I have two sons. My oldest son is here right now. My youngest son is six and he's at school. Um, and one, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna actually use him as a, bit, as, a, as a bit of an example here for a second. The reason that he's here right now is because daddy does a really weird thing for a living that's kind of difficult to describe. So on a regular basis, I take him with me to radio interviews, to, uh, things like this, I take him because I want him to see and experience and, and be able to take this in for himself because as he grows up into a man, as he grows up into a human being, as he grows up into a citizen of this city, this state, and this country, I want him to grow up with his eyes open to the possibilities. And the only way that I can do that is by giving him experiences. This year for Christmas, we bought him a, I bought both my sons a really nice video game system. And they were reasonably excited about it. But I realized something after we opened all the presents. And I'm going to, you're, you're not allowed to tell your brother this. I realized something once we opened all the presents that from now on the big gift needs to be a plane ticket. It doesn't need to be a video game. It doesn't need to be another thing to go in a toy box. It needs to be a plane ticket and some place that we can go and something we can do together because not only are those memories, but that's our thing that we are and the thing that we do and the thing that matters the most are the experiences that we have. The experiences we have as a father and son, the experience we have as friends, the experiences we have as students at the University of Oklahoma or whatever, wherever you're a student at, the experiences we have as a greater metro area with Oklahoma City and 50,000 people in the street, those experiences are more valuable than where we ate that night. It's the experience. Here's the thing that I want you to realize. Here are the things that uh, we must realize that are important about cities. Cities are. And you guys are like, duh. But the thing that we have to realize about the, the simple statement in the beginning of this, and this is a whole phrase that we're going to unpack real fast. The cities are. Majority of the population in Oklahoma right now lives in two main urban centers. I grew up in a small town about an hour outside of Oklahoma City, 2,600 people, one stoplight, one restaurant. I'm the guy that got out. That one guy. Not really, there are three of us that got out, but <laughs> I'm that guy that got out. And at this point, anytime I go back to that small town, I'm the guy that lives in the city. I'm that guy. But there are 1.4 million people in the greater metro area. And the reason that we're here is because of this little thing that I like to call friction. Beautiful ideas come from friction. Unexpected things come from friction. Because otherwise, all I'm going to do for the rest of my life is recycle my ideas. H and H was born from a conversation between a lady who loved coffee, a guy who loved beer, and a chef who loved to cook. None of us were business people who built events. None of us did any of these things. I got a phone call from a, from a food truck festival in New York City that asked us, and I won't use their exact words because some of them were four-letter words, but they said, how is it that you guys are whipping us at this thing that you're doing? How is it that you guys 
are 1.4 million people. We're 10 million people. And we have 15,000 people and you have 40,000 people. How is that possible? And we just started talking about it and the thing that we landed on is that we like to be together. <laughs> you guys like to put on your little Apple headphones and get on the subway and not actually talk to each other. We want to be together. We want to have those conversations. We want to see those beautiful things happen. And it's because we realize a, a simple fact that cities are. And the thing that we also realize that comes along with that is that cities are more than what we think. They're more than what we expect. They are more than a collection of buildings. They are more than paychecks and high rises. They are more than the cost of oil. And they are more than climbing the corporate ladder. They are more than all those things. They're more than all those things because we are more than all those things. You are not just somebody who has a major. You are not just somebody who's studying to do a thing. You are more than that. They're more than buildings. Because buildings look great from 1,000 feet up and 10,000 miles away. Buildings look great at a distance. And all those things are great, but the most valuable thing about them are the people that are contained with them and the ideas that they have. Because ideas and experiences, those are the things that change the world, not towers. Not the cool new restaurant, not the cool new thing. It's the chef in that cool new restaurant. It's the creative that drives the conversation. It's the business person who has a really great idea. It's the person who wants to change the world. Because cities are more than buildings. Because at the end of the day, the reason that we started h and the reason we did everything that we did was not to make money. The truth is, none of us really ever made any money at it. I know that might be hard for you to believe that 50,000 people in the street didn't make us any money, but the reason that we did it is because that's the kind of city we wanted to live in. That's where we wanted to live. Because we realized that cities are more than buildings. The great cities are people with great Imagination. Do you hear that? I'm going to cycle back to the beginning of that because I want you to read it one by one. Cities are more than buildings. Great cities are people with great imagination. That staircase right there, do you guys, can you guys see that that's a staircase? That staircase right there was, was in an abandoned hotel in downtown Oklahoma City that's being renovated now. Whenever they, moved in, whenever they went into that hotel to renovate it, that staircase isn't up to code. There's nothing they could do to kind of uh, rescue it and incorporate it into the new thing. So they were looking at it going, this is really cool. Like, what can we do with it? Well, it's a staircase. What can you do with it besides... Use it as a staircase. And someone, somewhere, who I want to shake their hand, decided, you know what would be really awesome to do? If you guys, how many of you have seen this in Midtown Oklahoma City? Basically, they said, you know what we should do? We should, we should put big metal cables on it, and we'll suspend it between two buildings, and people will walk by and go, wait a minute. <laughs> it's, kind of like, like a, it's kind of an inside joke. Like, I just let you in on an inside joke that's like, what the heck? That's imagination. That's the difference between a city and a, a sea of parking lots and a sea of chain restaurants and a sea of the same things in the same place in the same way and cities that have the same places and things all in the same locations. Because I could, I could pick the name of a major retailer and you could tell me the places that are going to be around that major retailer because we know how the shopping centers are laid out. Those don't have character. Those aren't the kind of places we want to be or the kind of places we want to live. So the thing that I want to leave you with today and the thousand, thousand strong idea, my last thing that I'm going to leave with you today is two things. Number one, don't wait for your big moment. Do the thing that you love to the best of your ability each and every day, and that's what leads to your big moment. And the second thing that I want to leave you with is this really simple idea. Do something 
to make the place where you live a better place. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be impressive. It doesn't have to end with you on a stage somewhere. It has to be what you love and the city that you want to live in, the place that you want to live in, the state that you want to live in, the, the, the life that you want to live. Because it takes each one of us to do that in order for this to be a city that has vibrancy in life. Make sense? Thank you very much.